Hey, what's going on, Church of the Highlands? Oh, it is so awesome to be in church today and wherever you're watching, in your car, at your home. Maybe you're watching on your computer or on your television from all the different platforms. Thanks so much for being a part of what God is doing and this weekend experience. And we are right here live, come on, on location, right from the plains in the Auburn Dream Center. Got some friends with me. So we are social distancing, we're being safe, and we're being very cautious, but we also are being together a little bit. So it's awesome to be able to talk for, to some friends. We've got some of our campus pastors here, a lot of our outreach team, and, and so we're so grateful to be together. I know we can't wait. I know our pastor cannot wait to do some in-person gatherings, and we'll be talking to you about those more and more every single week. But I want to take a moment, Pastor Chris wanted you to see firsthand what your generosity is doing. And right here in the Auburn Dream Center, this is a place where even before all this that took place, we give out thousands of meals, we help thousands of people. And literally when this took place, Pastor Chris gave us the green light. He said, let's do everything we can. The church is open. We began to do outreach and began to provide uh, different things for those that had need. And so we've upped that to tens of thousands of people have been, have been blessed and have been helped right here from this environment. And I was looking at some of the things that are happening right here. Really, it's happening everywhere at all of our locations. Just here, over 135,000 pounds of food have been given out to tens of thousands of families. And you know, the Bible tells us where Jesus said, when I was hungry, you fed me. And it's so important that we reach out to the physical needs as we give people Jesus. And every bit of all these things that you see around here, come on, we got some sliced peaches. We got some macaroni and cheese. I plan on staying here, having me a little lunch with the outreach team. All of those that we give out, we give them out in Jesus name. And whether it's distributing food or whether it's, it's supporting those that are serving at the hospital, we've been bringing baskets of blessings to those that are at the ICU units or partnering with our city officials, just all the things that are happening, you're a part of that. Your generosity is a part of that. And I just want to say thank you for the thousands of people that are being blessed, that are coming to Christ because of being the hands and feet of Jesus. And not only is it happening here in the plains, it's happening at all of our locations. And like Pastor Chris said, there's a green light. The church is open. The Great Commission is winning people. And it's because we make a decision to share. It's because we make a decision to reach out to others. And I want to say thank you so much for your generosity, because of your giving, because you're faithful in your tithe and offering, because you're faithful in your giving, uh, we can make a difference, and you're making a difference. Everything that you see, you're a part of it. So I want to encourage you around giving for a moment, and right there on your screen, there's the different ways that you and I can give. I know our family does text to give, or maybe you want to give online or mail it in right now, but I can tell you this. Uh, it is making a difference. It is, it is transforming lives. And generosity is bringing freedom into people's lives. And you can still be a part of that. You can go on the Serve app, and we've got a lot of things happening this week as it relates to distributing food and partnering with our food banks and being able to sow masks for those that are vulnerable. And we're just continuing to, to really make Serve Day every day. And I know we've got a Serve Day this summer, but I'm going to tell you right now, it's Serve Day season right now. And every day we're reaching people. You're doing that right there in your context. And so I just appreciate a pastor at a church that believes generosity is just a priority. You're God first people. And so thank you so much for putting God first in your finances as you've been faithful in tithe and offering. And thank you so much so that we can continue to be a place of outreach and be an oasis for a hurting world. There's a lot of hurting people right now during this time, a lot of scared people, a lot of people that feel vulnerable, uh, that feel afraid. And so we come alongside of what God is doing together and we make a difference, so thanks so much. So I'm excited today to be able to share on location right here at our Dream Center. And I feel like God's given me a word. I feel like I'm in my natural habitat, man. I've got, I've got hygiene products, got some detergent over here, got some shampoo, about to bring somebody some bottles of 
of water. And, uh, but I feel like God's given me a word right here from the Dream Center. I want to encourage you today. I'm going to teach for a few minutes right out of one of my favorite passages and out of one of my favorite books, which is the book of Luke. And I want to talk for a few minutes and give you a title of this message right there where you're at in your home or with your family. Get them all together. Get your Bible out. Get ready to enter in as we've already worshiped. And we'll finish up worshiping and have an opportunity for people to say yes to Jesus. But I want to talk for a few minutes on the idea of interruption or invitation. And we see this in the Bible in this story. Interruption or invitation. So let's all pray together. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you so much for what you're doing. And Lord, what an honor it is to be with friends and and, and those that love outreach and love people and campus pastors. And Lord, we thank you for being in a church that just believes that that people matter to God. And they matter to God. They matter to us. And Lord, thank you for a team and a pastor who just says, let's put it as a priority to reach others. So Lord, I thank you for reaching people through these different opportunities right now. Even these, these platforms reach people today, God. I pray that your word is clear. I pray that your word brings transformation. I pray that you anoint everything we say because we're believing for changed lives and for transformation to happen in our heart and in our world. So Lord, we love you so much and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You know what I always say? Look at somebody. We're social distancing, so we're going to have to look across the moment and just say, hey, Jesus is here. And anything can happen. Anything Come on, can smile happen. at that son or smile at that neighbor and say, I believe it's going to happen to you right now. So we're just believing that's going to happen. Okay, let's check out Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Uh, I'm going to read for a few minutes. Now, when you look at this, you immediately see that it's the parable of the Good Samaritan. You could title it the parable of the Good Samaritan. But I believe there's something else that God wants to say to us. And I believe it's the truth. I'll read it slow because this is one of those stories where literally... Uh, church, you could just read it and say amen and, and, and go into the kitchen, go out to the garage, go out to the yard, or, or just do whatever you need to do right now in these moments. It's just that powerful. It just, it's the sum total of a truth uh, in this story of the Good Samaritan. It tells us this in verse 25. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus, really to trap Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied, How do you read it? I love how Jesus answers a question. Think about this with a question. He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus says, you answered correctly. Do this and you will live. Now, I think we should, we could end the story right there. It could be the end, but it doesn't because this teacher, this expert of the law, he wants to lean in because he's trying to figure out uh, how, what is the limit of this uh, law? What is the limit of this promise? How, how small can I make this? How narrow can I make this? Because he says this. He says, trying to justify himself, he asks Jesus. He says, then who is my neighbor? Who then is my Narrow it down for me. Who is my neighbor? Jesus replied and he told a story. He says, a man was going down to, from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, look what the Bible says. It says he actually passed on the other side. He saw him, but he went to the other side. That was what the priest did. You would think, hey, that's, we're, we're going good now. The priest is coming down the road. No, 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 no. Went to the other side. Then it says, that a Levite was coming down the road. He came to the same place, but when he saw him, he passed on the other side. And then Jesus says this, but a Samaritan, he could not have said to this expert of the law, a worse word. It was like he said a foul word. A Samaritan to the Jewish people was a villain. He was the rejected person. Uh, It was the enemy. He said it was a Samaritan that was traveling. He came where the man was. He didn't pass on the other side. He came to where the man was. And when he saw him, he made a decision. He took pity on him, had compassion. He went to him, bandaged his wounds, pouring into oil and the wine to bring healing. And then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him into the inn, that safe place, that place of healing, that place of care. And the Bible says that he took care of him. The next day, he took out his money and gave it to the innkeeper and said, look after him. 
He said, when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. I love that word extra. He said, which of these three things, th- these three, do, do you think was his neighbor? Jesus asked the man who, fe- who fell on the hands of the robbers. The expert of the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. He couldn't even say the Samaritan's name. He just said it was that one. Jesus said, then you go and you do likewise. You know, you could title this message, The Good Samaritan. You could title it, uh, Who is Your Neighbor? You could title it, Go and Do Likewise. But what I see in this story is the idea of interruption or invitation. It's a story of interruption. It's a story of invitation. Now, I got to confess something to you. During this, this quarantine, this shelter at home, I've been binge watching a television program. I, I got to confess to you, I've been binge watching a, a series. I, my, my wife got me into it, I promise. It's my wife's fault. The reason why I'm binge watching, my wife got me into it. She drug me into this. And the show that we've been binge watching is a show called The Waltons. Oh, man. I love me some Waltons, boy. Come on up in those Blue Ridge Mountains in, in Virginia, the family there. Now, if you're under 30, I need to give you some context. You don't know none about the Waltons. And, and it was a family during the Depression era. And they lived up on a mountain. You got Grand Paul, you got John Boy, you got Mary Ellen. And we've been watching it every night. I mean, every night. It comes on twice. We watch it twice. Two hours of the Waltons every night. We get in bed, we get ourselves together, and we watch. The Waltons. And after about the hundredth episode, because we probably watched that many, I can tell you all about Elizabeth. I can tell you a little bit about Ben and Jim Bob, all of them. I can tell you all of them. And, uh, but here's the thing. My wife said this to me the other day. She looked at her, she said, you know what I realize? That none of these stories is about the Waltons, their family. All the stories are, there's a plot and a narrative and a theme around everyone who visits Walton's Mountain. All the stories are about the strangers that they encounter. It's about the outsiders that they encounter. It's about the ones who show up on Walton's Mountain. It's about someone else that comes into their home, sits at their table, lives out in the barn, helps them out in the sawmill. Oh yeah, I know their vocation. I know what's happening on Walton's Mountain. I mean, and, they, and there's this decision among the family is do they see it as an interruption or do they see it as an invitation? And there's this tension that takes place the whole hour of trying to see it. And what I love about it is live the mom. She, she's a church lady. She goes to church. She's in the choir. Ooh, she always sees it as an invitation. And so as the family is navigating this, she's reminding them because she knows the rewards. She knows the return and she knows the redemption of when you see life and you see people as an invitation, not an interruption. She makes that decision. I think that's what, I think that's the story of Luke chapter 10. There's three people, and there's three people coming down a road that meets one person. Two of them see this person, this, this, it, this problem, and because they see the person as a problem or different than them, they see it as an interruption, where there's one that comes down the road, and he sees it, this person, and he sees the person as valuable. He sees the person as an opportunity. He sees the person as a call. He sees the person as an open door. One sees it as an interruption, or two of them see it as an interruption and a void. One sees it as an invitation. I think that's so much of life. I really think it's life as it relates to this COVID-19. I was thinking about this. You know, how much has our life been interrupted? Do you remember when COVID and quarantine and shelter at home and the press conference and all the safety measures? Because this is a real deal. It's painful. It's a real sickness. Those people lost their life. There's the people we've been ministering to. This is, this, is, this, is, this is Paul's life. But do you remember when your life got halted? Do you remember the moment when you realized that I'm not going to be able to go on that trip? I'm not going to be able to go see grandmother at the nurse at home. My life is going to change a little bit. The restaurants are closing. My school's been adjusted. Uh, my job has changed. My routine. I'm not going to be able to get up in the morning and go work out. I'm, the acti- Church has changed. All these things that have taken place, I'm not seeing my friends that, that we feel like that, that, that COVID has been such an interruption. Have you seen it as an interruption? Maybe some of you even feel like that traveler where it's like this quarantine and, and the sickness and all these things that have happened. You feel like it stripped you of something. It stripped you of an of a opportunity to summer. It stripped you of graduation. It stripped you of a connection. It's robbed you of some things. You maybe feel like that you've gone through this. You've lost something. Maybe it's even hurt you. It's hurt your family. 
And we go through these things in life and we make this decision. Are we going to see it just as an interruption, but we lean into God Almighty and maybe see it as an invitation. You know, so often when I read the Bible, I try to put myself in the Bible. I look at the characters and the people and I always say to myself as I read a story like this, I always say, okay, who are you going to be, d Riz? Who are you going to be, d Riz? That's, I'm Dino Rizzo, d Riz. Who are you going to be in the story? Am I going to be like the priest whose love has limits? Am I going to be like the Levite who doesn't have time? Think about that, church. Who, do, who, who are you going to be in this moment? Or am I going to be like the good Samaritan who just makes a decision that his love does not have limits and that he's willing to step into this situation and see it as an invitation from God Almighty? Or is he just going to stand at the intersection and the crossroad and only see it as an interruption? I want to be like the good Samaritan. He decides that it's an invitation. His love's not going to look away. His love's not going to walk away. He's going to jump in. He jumps in like you jump in. He jumps in like we jumped in here at the, at the Dream Center in our Zoom small grouper. I, I believe underneath his robe, he's got a red surf shirt. Oh man, he's he, he going to jump in. He's going to be a part. He crosses the barriers of culture, of, 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 of diversity, of, of, of an impossible. He crosses those barriers. He does not see him as an enemy. He's going to do whatever it takes and he's going to get involved. Guess what? Like you do. He's going to help like you do. He's going to go the extra mile like you do, Church of the Highlands. He's going to not walk away. He's going he's to say, that's a green light opportunity like you do, Church of the Highlands. He becomes the hero, right? I mean, you read this story. He's 100% the hero. And I don't know about you, but I like a story that has a hero. I like heroes. Uh, I've been watching also the other channel that's on our home is the Hallmark Channel. Ooh, Hallmark Channel movie, every one of them the same. I can just make up, I'll write a Hallmark movie right here at the Auburn Dream Center. Okay? Lady's up in New York. She's a publicist. Okay? She decides in Auburn, her, her grandmother got a little bake shop. And, and the bake shop's getting closed because they can't fix the electricity. And so she comes down. She leaves her boyfriend. He's a big hedge fund dealer up in New York. She comes down to, to Auburn, and she's helping her grandmother. She realizes that the power doesn't work, and they've got to do a cupcake competition. If they win the cupcake competition, it's going to be amazing because it's in, this, it's in Tumor's Corner. Come on, somebody. I'm just, I'm just making all this up. And, and guess who shows up? The electrician. His name is Tom. He looks like Denzel Washington. Come on, somebody. Brother look like Brad Pitt. What's up? Looks like our pastor, Chris Hodges. Looks so good. All of a sudden, sparks fly, and, and they get connected. But the hedge fund dealer, he's going to come down and check on everything because you got to get back and publish that book. But she makes a decision. No, 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 no. They win the cupcake competition. They open up the bakery. They get married, and they have little kids. End of the story. Hallmark story. They're all the same. They all the same. The hero. Every time the Hallmark movie comes, I start telling my wife, let me tell you what's going to happen here. Oh, yeah, it's a bakery. It's a florist. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. Something's going to go on. I love the hero in this story. But really, I love the hero who's telling the story. Because the hero who's telling the story is the one that came down my road. He's the one that comes to all of us. He's the one that comes to where we are. He's God Almighty. He's Emmanuel. He's God with us. And he comes to you and I when we've been stripped and robbed and we found ourselves in a ditch and we found ourselves wounded. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. We found ourselves broken. We found ourselves ignored and hurt and all these things. And he brings healing and he pays a price that I could never pay. It's the price, it's the price of redemption. And he goes to the cross for you and I so that we don't have to live distant, but we can come into a safe place like a church or a family. We can find a place of freedom. We find a place of healing. I love the hero of this story. The hero of that story is Jesus. He's the hero. And he lets you and I be a part of that. Every time we sew a mask, every time we call a nursing home and just say, can I pray with someone? 
Every time we partner with an agency that's helping the homeless right now. Every time we've tested someone for this, this horrible virus, this, this terrible thing, and, and we've, we've, we've done something, we've, we've given our resources, we've, we've given our tithe, we've given our time, we've, we've given our, our care. For, every time we do that, guess what? We're like that good Samaritan, but we're really the hands and feet of Jesus. It's like what you do. I love everything about this story. And I want to finish up and, and kind of give you some practical uh, ways, some practical decisions, because when I read this, I say, okay, I want to do more of that. I don't want to see all this as an interruption. I just don't want to be, have a bad mood because summer's changed and you know, my finances are a little different right now and I can't go see my friends. I, you know, everything, you know, this first phase, I don't know how many people are in the room, when's church going to open, all these things. I just don't want to see everything as an interruption. I want to step into it as an invitation. So how do we do it? I'll just give you some practical uh, thoughts here that I wrote down. Here's the first thing. Let's start by reaching our road. Just start on the road that's in front of you. The obvious ones. Who is right now in your life? Who, who's on your path right now? The path is limited. The path's a little smaller. But who is right in front of you? I, I had the funniest conversation with a, a friend of mine. He's my age. And we were talking. He said, man, I've been reaching people I hadn't been reaching. I've been hanging out with all these people I never hang out with. All these people I never see before. I said, who are you hanging out with? He said, my wife and kids. I said, wow, I've never, I've never spent this much time with them in my life. I said, wow, let's start there. Maybe in your home or maybe just right there in that, that small context. Maybe it's in a Zoom small group. Maybe it's just with a small serve team. But the question is, let's start by reaching our road. Let's start. Let's start. Here's the second thing I think could help us is let's choose to just be a neighbor. It's amazing how Jesus uses that word. It really means almost like a word like family. It almost means like family to those who have no family. And I thought about that in that context. How important it is that we love people around us, but how important it is church. Come on. How important it is that we love people that are different than us? I mean, that, is that not the real test? I love loving people like Dino. I love me some Dino. I mean, I love people who dress like me, who walk like me, who came from my same context. As my, I love people that got my personality. Oh, I love people that think like me, that make decisions like me, that like my food and like my television program. Say, came from my background, came from my, 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 my cultural background, all my, my economic background. I love people that are like me. But can I tell you something? It's really not love unless you're loving people that are different than you. That's what I've always loved about our church. It's what I love about our pastor. There's just no barriers. Whatever campus, whatever part of our community, whatever part of our state, in whatever way we need to respond, because all people matter to God, therefore they matter to us. That's the kind of church you're in. That's the kind of church that you give to. That's the kind of church that God has called us to be as it relates to being on the dream team or being a part of the serve expression. We're just being good neighbors. We're just making a decision that we're going to love people without prerequisite. Oh, come on. Hey, with, without pretense. Hey, without prejudice. We're just going to love people. We're going to be a good neighbor. And I don't know if there's ever been a time where we need to be a good neighbor like right now. Oh, this is the time to be a good neighbor. And then the last, I'm getting fired up down here at the Auburn Dream Center. About to run around and grab me some macaroni. Here's the last part. And I want to encourage you with this. Because sometimes this gets hard. Is let's stay committed to compassion. Let's just stay committed to compassion. Sometimes it gets hard. We get weary. Things are happening in our own life. And, and you know, you don't understand my finances right now. You know what's happening in my blended family. I've lost my job. My, my, my whole life right now, I feel lonely. I feel, I, feel, I feel so small. I feel like I can't do anything. Can I encourage you? Let's stay committed, Church of the Highlands. You've been, we, we've been committed to compassion from day one. When Pastor Chris planted Church of the Highlands, it was committed to compassion. We were committed to compassion before this virus. Guess what? We're going to stay committed to compassion after all of this. We're compassionate people. You know why? Because when we walk up on that ditch, we don't see a stranger. 
We don't see an outsider. I believe we peek over into that ditch and we see ourselves. I think that's why the Samaritan, he knew what it was like to be rejected. He knew what it was like to be despised. And when he looked into that person's eyes, he saw himself. It was like a mirror. And we see hurting, broken people. It's like a mirror for us. It's our own story. Let's stay committed to compassion. My heart full of compassion. My time, my motive, my money, my serve. I know this much, your compassion will cost. But boy, does it make a difference. So we give. We're faithful in our giving. Uh, we buy food. Come to a dream center, small group. We pack a box. We put a box together. Pray a little prayer over it. Put a card in there, a little act of kindness card. What we've been doing down here, we've been using the school buses from one of the school districts called a partnership. And we put that box on a school bus and it goes down the road and we bring it to a family who's in need. We believe God that God's gonna bless it. And we do it all for the cause of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, take those, those lima beans. In Jesus' name, take this detergent. In Jesus' name, here's those diapers. In the name of Jesus, we give it to God. You just never know. But then one little boy comes out the next day, sticks a note into that bus driver's hand. And he says this to the people of Church of the Islands. He says, if it wasn't for you, we would go hungry. Thank you for taking time out of your day. Here's what this little boy said. Risking your life for us so that we can be fed. Thank you, Austin. I'm glad we see it as an invitation. In Jesus' name. Can I pray for you? Father, I just pray for every single person. And Lord, I pray right there in that moment that we will make a decision to say yes to compassion. Lord, we will make a decision to recognize those on our road and to be that neighbor that you want us to be. Father, I pray that you would stir up compassion like never before, even during these moments. Stir up the compassion in our life. We say yes to your invitation. But maybe you're watching and maybe right now you feel like the traveler. You feel like the one that, that's been robbed. You feel, you feel stranded. You feel lost, ignored. Maybe because of all this or maybe something else happening in life, you feel avoided or forgotten. Maybe you've gone through a pain. Maybe there has been a divorce. Maybe there's been a, a hurt. Maybe an addiction or an anxiety. Something has happened where you feel alone. I can encourage you. That there's good news. There's a good Samaritan that's right there for you. His name is Jesus, and he is reaching out to you. So maybe if that's you, you want to say yes to Jesus. You want to say yes to that invitation. Just pray this prayer from your heart right there. Wherever you are, just pray this out loud. Just say, or from your heart, just say, Jesus. Forgive me of my sins. I believe that you died and that you rose again. So I confess you as my Lord. Be my new beginning. Be my fresh start. Be my everything. I receive you in Jesus' name. Amen.